In this video, we're going to show that given a sequence of continuous functions that uniformly converges to some function, then that limit has to be continuous as well. So uniform convergence is enough to ensure that uh, continuity transfers from the sequence of functions to their limit. And so let's write that down. If fn is our sequence of functions and they're all continuous on their domain, which I've called a, and let's say f is some function that's also on a such that, again, this notation here, when you use these double arrows, that typically means that the sequence of function converges uniformly to f rather than the weaker, weaker idea of pointwise to f on the domain. But what can we say in that case, then the limit f should be continuous as well. So we're going to prove this in this video. And the idea of the proof is really based on a picture. And it's a typical um, kind of epsilon delta proof, but along with this idea of epsilons and, uh, and ends for these sequences of functions here. So what's my picture here? I've taken my, say, red graph f. And uh, what I've done, ignore the blue for the moment, and just think about the red. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put some window around the red graph of length, in this case, epsilon over three. Now you'll see why epsilon over three was chosen as we go through the proof, but just for now, you can put some window around this function f. Now, what the idea is, is if I get to assume that the sequence of functions fn converges uniformly to the red function f, well then I know that I should be able to go far enough out of my sequence so that all the fn's, they should have a graph that fits inside of this window. It fits inside of this yellow window here. So what I want you to notice is the blue graph fn, yes, fits inside that yellow window there. And then the next thing that I want to notice is I know that each fn is continuous. So uh, I could make sure that I choose x and c close enough to each other to make sure that the difference in the corresponding y values, so like the uh, difference in the y values between this blue point and this blue point is less than, or I guess is still smaller than the length of this window. And then similarly, what that forces then, what I wanna show is that the corresponding difference between the two uh, y values on the graph of my function f also has to have a difference that's smaller than the length of this window. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use this picture to try to formalize that argument and hopefully make it perhaps a little bit more clear as well. So what's the proof look like? So let's assume each fn is continuous, and let's assume that fn converges uniformly to f. And what does that mean? So typically when you're doing these proofs, you want to try to write out some definitions of things, because that is what you start working with. That is, uh, gives you your footing. So what we can say, given this, that for any epsilon, so pick one, well, I guess for any epsilon someone gives you is what I mean, you should be able to find a natural number capital N so that as soon as you get past that, you can guarantee that all the functions in the sequence are within epsilon over three of the limit function f. And so in my picture, what I'm saying is for every single N past this capital N here, all these blue graphs should be in that yellow window. And that should hold for every x in your domain. So remember the uniformly continuous hypothesis, that meant that this n here, it didn't depend on what x you're at, that n only depends on the epsilon that somebody randomly gave you. So that's gonna work for every x in the domain. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna let c be any point in a, and what our goal is is to show that f's continuous at c. So our goal again is to show that f is continuous at this arbitrary c. And so uh, my picture moved, I'll come back to it in a minute. So then what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to show that this is less than epsilon eventually. But let's start playing around with it. So let's see what I could say about that. And what we're going to do is do our add and subtract trick. In other words, add zero in a sneaky way here because I know how these terms and how these terms perhaps, or maybe we'll see in a second, how these things relate to each other. So what I can say so far is I could split this up with the triangle inequality. So that's all I've done so far is split up this absolute value into the sum of these absolute values via the triangle inequality. And uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the trick again. I'm gonna add and subtract something in here that's kind of sneaky. So I'm gonna add and subtract fn of c inside of there. And then I'm gonna use the triangle inequality again to split this whole thing up in the next line into the absolute value of this plus the absolute value of this. So I hope that you follow that. And now what I'll do is I'll start using some of the facts that I know. So what are some of the facts that I know here? Well, I know that uh, I have made sure that I've got some n such that once I get past it, this can be made less than epsilon over three. 
And uh, what else do I know? Same idea here. So again, that didn't matter whether it was at x or it was at c. I get to conclude that for both of these because that worked for all x and a. Now the last thing that I gotta do is I gotta argue to you, why should this be arbitrarily small? Why should the distance between fn of x and fn of c be arbitrarily small? But uh, why, why can't I argue that I should be able to make this less than epsilon over three? Um, what I should be able to do then is use the fact that the function fn is continuous. So if needed, if I need to make sure this is epsilon over 3, because fn is continuous, I'm guaranteed to find some window around c so that the x's in that window will make this whole expression less than epsilon over 3. That, in a nutshell, is the magic of what continuity means. That is the meaning of continuity, that's what I mean to say. So, because fn is continuous on a, there exists some delta so that as long as I pick x to be within delta of your point c, then I should be able to guarantee that the outputs should be within epsilon over 3 of each other. Therefore, this term is less than epsilon over 3 as well. And now you see, well, I've got these three terms here, and when you add them all up, you get epsilon. So what just happened? Uh, we just showed that as long as I make sure that x is within this delta, and remember this delta just came from the hypothesis that fn is continuous, um, then what do we have? We just showed that the difference in the outputs is eventually less than epsilon. And so that's what I'm just restating right here. And of course, we just showed that, uh, that f satisfies the definition of continuity at c. Now the last thing that we might do, I'm not sure what's going on here, there. So thus f is continuous at c, and of course since c was arbitrary, so maybe back up here, just let c be any point in a, and this idea just worked. Uh, so since c was arbitrary in a, we can conclude that f is continuous on the whole interval a.